In this video, I'll be looking at the misconceptions or mistakes usually made by students in B3 about organization and digestive system. First of all, it's about describing the state of enzymes in different temperatures. When the enzyme is at a low temperature, don't say that they have denatured because they haven't. Denature by definition means the loss of active site because that the there's it's so hot or whatever reason that it causes the uh, the active site to change its shape, and that by definition is denatured. But it must be caused by either high kinetic energy because of high temperature or a change in pH. If it's in a low temperature, they have very low kinetic energy, so it just simply isn't moving that much. Doesn't mean that it's lost its uh, active site shape. So make sure you say that they are inactive, but not denatured. At a high temperature, then yes, you can say that it's denatured. That's very good. But lots of people uh, very easily say either at high temperature or at the wrong pH. They say that the enzymes are killed or the enzymes die. Again, don't do that because enzymes are just proteins. They are not even alive in the first place. So they cannot die or they cannot be killed. So make sure you say that they, they are denatured at high temperature or at the wrong pH, but not they're killed or died. So to add on to that, just so that you're aware, uh, temperature and rate of reactions it's uh, inactive if it's too cold. At the, maxim uh, at the optimum temperature, then it's got the maximum rate of reaction. Then very quickly, once it's gone past the optimum temperature, they can denature uh, in a rather short period of time. So just this is how the, uh, the graph should look like. Another common mistake is about uh, mixing up the function of hydrochloric acid in the stomach. Very tempting for students to say that they digest and break down food because that's the function of the stomach and the most abundant thing that you can find in stomach is usually hydrochloric acid. But that's not the case. The hydrochloric acid is there for two reasons. Number one, and the most important one in some sense, is that they provide optimum pH for pepsin to digest proteins in the stomach. Pepsin is a very specific type of protease, which is an enzyme that breaks down proteins. It's a specific type of protease that exists in the stomach, and they are very well adapted to only work at pH 2. So they're very low pH, and that's exactly why we find uh, acid in the stomach. So that's what it is. Or alternatively, you can say that they can kill pathogens in food as, in, in some sense, a, um, a physical defense against um, pathogens invading the body. But at this point, make sure you read the question for the best possible answer. If the question is saying, state the function of the hydrochloric acid in the stomach for digestion, then you must put down this reason. If you put down killing pathogens in food, that is not answering the question because this is not helping digestion. It just simply helps with uh, preventing you from getting sick. So just be aware, read the question carefully, see what you can or what you should put down. Third thing is about the function of bile. Again, similar to hydrochloric acid, people are very tempted to say that they digest or break down lipids or the fact that they are an enzymes that they're enzymes or lip lipase to break down lipids. That's not the case. They are uh, bile is a chemical that emulsifies lipids. This is a very, very useful word or a very important word. Emulsification means it, uh, that's the uh, process in which you are physically or mechanically breaking large oil drops into smaller oil droplets. So it's the breakdown, a mechanical breakdown. It's not a chemical breakdown. So the point of emulsification is to increase the surface area for more lipase action. So, so basically meaning because now that you've got a much larger surface area, then there will be more lipase being able to act on it. So if we draw a very quick picture, imagine that I've got a large oil drop here, and I've, that means I've got this many lipase working on that. But if I'm able to physically break it down using bile into smaller, Oil droplets, so there's still sort of the same volume, but this time I can have a lot more lipase uh, surrounding it uh, and breaking it down and speeding up the whole process of digestion. So that's the importance of emulsification. The other possible function you can say is to neutralize the hydrochloric acid from the stomach in order to, to build onto that question, uh, the answer is so that to provide the optimum pH for the digestive enzymes to work in the small intestine. Because if we don't do that, then the acid from the stomach will denature all of the other enzymes, such as lipase and carbo other carbohydrates uh, 
like amylase in the small intestine, which is not ideal. So again, neutralizing the hydrochloric acid from the stomach to do so. Last but not least, uh, the fourth thing to mention is making sure that you know the functions and the differences between the liver, pancreas, and the kidney, because people just tend to mix them all up and thinking they're sort, sort of the same thing. They are not, even though they're found in very similar places. A liver is one of the biggest organs in the entire body, um, and the function is it produces bile for emulsification or neutralization to help with lipid digestion. Uh, alternatively, it also do a detoxification, so uh, it basically breaks down uh, any alcohol or any medicine that you take when you're ill, uh, and also lactic acid, which is produced from anaerobic respiration. All of these things are bad for the body, so the liver is basically the factory that breaks them down and makes them in, in a non-harmful form in the body. And, uh, another function that they do is to store glycogen as well, so regulating blood glucose level, um, and we'll come back to that in a second. Pancreas, in that sense, it in terms of digestion, yes, it is involved in it as well, and they make uh, all sorts of digestive enzymes. So, for example, uh, pancreatic amylase, which breaks down starch in the small intestine to uh, simple sugars, uh, lipase that breaks down lipids to uh, a glycerol and three fatty acids, and also uh, proteases that work not in the stomach but in the small intestine to break proteins into amino acids. So that's what the pancreas do. It's a factory of digestive enzymes. But it can also produce insulin and glucagon, which are hormones, not enzymes, hormones that regulate blood glucose level. There's a whole chapter called ch uh, chapter 11 about regulation of blood glucose level, which we'll come on to that later on. And this is where it links up. So what we say is that if there's a high blood glucose level, then your pancreas produces insulin to change uh, glucose into glycogen, which can be stored in the liver or in the muscles. If the blood le glucose level is too low, then glucagon is released to change glycogen back into glucose uh, in the liver and the, uh, in the muscles, um, and that raises it up again. So they, there is a link in between. So they both are involved in digestion and in, in blood glucose level regulation, but be very clear on their involvement and their role. Lastly is the kidney. Uh, that's almost completely unrelated. It produces urine, so it's the organ that actually filters your blood and uh, makes sure that you get rid of the urea, uh, which is bad for your body, and also any excess water and mineral ions. So it controls uh, water and mineral ion levels in the body. So when it's, if you don't have enough water, then uh, the kidney will reabsorb more water back into your body. If you've had lots of drink, then it will reabsorb less, making more urine. So that's the involvement. Be clear on their differences and don't mix them up. So there you go. This is, uh, these are all of the common misconceptions for B3, organization and digestive system.